Okay, hello internet, welcome back. It's uh, been a little bit, and uh, I decided to read a book this week uh, all about Linux and the command line. And I'll put the book uh, somewhere around here. So the reason I decided to go with this book are a few reasons, um, but the, the, the three kind of that stood out most to me are, uh, I'll walk through them. So the first is uh, theory and practice. So the previous week, if you're tracking my journey, you'll know that I uh, just recently passed my Security Plus certification. And the three textbooks that I read for that were basically um, all theory. So it was basically teaching you the generalized concepts behind security, some basic terminology, etc. So that's good, and when learning something, anything, so an entire industry or a broad swath of topics, I think bouncing in between both theory and practice is the best way to truly understand a topic. Instead of just kind of theoretically understanding what they're talking about, you can actually go, uh, in this instance, hand, hands on the keyboard and actually do things. So I wanted to dip into practice since I was in theory for two weeks. The other reason I chose this book is uh, Linux is apparently everywhere. Um, I knew a lot about Linux, not a lot, but I knew some about Linux before diving into this. Uh, but when I started reading in this book and doing kind of research in the, on the outsides and the outskirts of it, I realized that Linux is everywhere. Um, and when, when a consumer like yourself and I or whomever is watching this video, uh, we tend to know of a lot of operating systems like Mac OS and Windows and Android and iOS. We, we have these in our heads or, we, or we've at least heard the terms. But when it comes to Linux, not many, not many people hear about it unless you're kind of uh, a geek like me or others. But surprisingly enough, Linux as an operating system is the most widely adopted operating system, period. And the reason being is a lot of these operating systems we use today tend to use Linux as its kind of like its uh, origin. So it's the seed of the other operating systems that branch off of it. For instance, Android, a mobile, all, not all, but a lot of mobile phones use Android, which has a seed of Linux. Another thing around Linux is a lot of IoT devices, so a lot of people like to talk about the Internet of Things and how everything's going to be smart and talking to each other. Almost all of these IoT devices run a form of Linux. And the other thing are servers. So a lot of our computers are considered clients and we're pinging off to servers to get websites, documents, etc. And a lot of these servers that are sitting out on the Internet are based on uh, Linux. So with that said, a lot of these Linux systems are everywhere, and I figured if I want to uh, immerse myself in this industry of cybersecurity and learn more about it, I should probably learn about the systems that are out there, uh, the most widely adopted ones. E especially going in the future, um, I think, or I think I know, and a lot of people do know as well, is that IoT and mobile will kind of be the future of a lot of devices. So if Linux is the leading edge of this, then obviously getting on board with Linux and understanding it, at least uh, to a certain extent, is pretty important for future roles in this industry and other tech industries. Uh, and the other thing is command line. So uh, with Linux, it's not, you don't have to use command line when using Linux, you can use um, the GUI, but a lot of uh, cool kids use Linux for uh, many reasons. So one of the reasons is efficiency, so it's a lot more efficient to do things through Linux. You also get different or uh, more powerful features through command line. And another kind of critical piece here is uh, some of the machines, or most of the machines, I don't know most, but a good amount of the machines that are running Linux, uh, let it be an IoT device or a server or something else that has, it, it's considered headless, meaning it has no screen. So there is no GUI for you to kind of click around and do things. You actually can only communicate to it through the command line. So learning the command line is um, one of many things on this journey that I will be doing. And this book was centered around the command line within Linux, specifically with a hacking lens. So it talked a lot about security and Linux and command line. And that was another big reason why I chose this book. And lastly, the penguin. I mean, it's over here, here. The penguin looks really cool on this cover. So that's another reason. Okay, so this post, um, I basically what I did is I wanted to share five uh, interesting discoveries I came across when reading through this textbook as well as doing research on the outskirts of the textbook. And what I'll do here is I will actually uh, tell you about two. There's five. Uh, go to the post if you want the other three. I recommend you go to the post either way because there's a lot of examples and links and diagrams, etc. that make it a lot easier to understand. Uh, so the two I'll mention here, um, one is basically being able to erase yourself from history in the Linux realm. And the other one is all about automation. So being able to automate your life away. So the first, uh, erasing. So in the Linux world or in any operating system, there's, there's an ability to delete things, delete files and, and, and folders, etc. And if you use Windows, you've probably done this many times where you delete a file and you're like, crap, I need that file. Luckily, it's usually in the recycling bin. So you can go to the recycling bin and, re and retrieve it. Well, within Linux, um, there, there are variations of this, but the two commands I want to talk about now 
are remove and shred. So the first one, remove, most people know about if they know about command line kind of things. And the remove is just a simple command that you type in rm, and that will remove whatever you're wanting to remove. So it could be a text file, uh, a script, etc. So you can remove something. But the thing about remove is actually not truly removed. So what's happened when you do the remove piece is it's um, you're basically telling the file system that hey, this file that's sitting on this location on the on the disk on the hard disk on the drive, um, you can overwrite it with other stuff in the future. Uh, so it's you can this this space is open now for you to overwrite, but in reality, it hasn't moved. The thing is still there in that location. It just hasn't been over, overwritten yet. An analogy I came across, which was quite interesting, is it's kind of like a library. So back in the day, when you would go to the library, you didn't have a computer to kind of look up books. You would have to go to the index card section. You would walk into the library and you'd look at all these index cards and you'd say, okay, well, um, this book is at, located on this aisle on this shelf uh, in this section, right? So you have the index card and then you go to the book. So imagine that you walk into a library, you pull up that index card, you rip the index card up and you leave. You've removed the index card, but you haven't actually completely deleted the book because the book's still sitting on the shelf. You've just removed the index card. So it's, it's kind of a similar concept to remove in Linux. But with shred, so, and the reason this is relevant to security and hacking is say if you're an attacker and you're hacking someone and you want to kind of erase all of your traces from all of the bad things you've done in the system. Well, this is one way to do so. And shred basically, instead of just removing the pointer, so the pointer and the thing in the file system that's pointing to the hard drive saying that um, you can overwrite this, you do that piece, so you remove, but also you overwrite the file sitting on the disk, on the, on the disk drive. And the number of overwrites you can, you can do as many as you want. Um, and the shred command is basically you do shred, you can do a dash F and then you do a dash N and then the number of number of uh, overwrites you want to do and then you talk about what you want to overwrite. So it could be a text file, a script, etc. Um, the, the F is basically talking about saying that you're saying that you're allowed to shred this basically. So shred, I'm allowed to shred this. F is like you have the authorization to do so. Um, N is the number of overwrites you would like to do. And then 10 is the number correlated to the N. And then the item at the end is what you're shredding. Hopefully I'll put a command uh, here somewhere so you can see it. And in the forensics, uh, digital forensics, depending on how, you know, skilled the investigator is when they're trying to see what a hacker did. If a hacker shredded um, the logs associated to their activity on the system, then maybe uh, they might not be able to trace what happened, but there are usually ways that they can figure things out because investigators have some amazing tools to basically f reverse time. Um, but this is one way if you are an attacker or if you're just somebody that wants to shred some secret documents or private documents, um, this is the way to do it. The next is automation. So within the, uh, well, in generally in, in tech, uh, automation is kind of like the epicenter of w why we do a lot of what we do. Because if you can automate as much as possible, then you can kind of free up time to work on more complex or high priority tasks within the cybersecurity realm. So automation is pretty important, especially when there's a chronic uh, skill shortage in the industry. So within Linux and within other systems, there's this generic term called uh, daemons. And this is really interesting and there's a mascot I'm gonna put somewhere here. And the, the daemon was actually named after, I think some book, you can, you can look it on Wikipedia and I also linked it in the post. But the premise of a daemon is kind of thinking of it as like a little demon. And the little demon is a little demon that does a lot of background processes and activities on your operating system without you actually knowing about it or being aware of it. And uh, within Linux, they have two specific commands that are correlated to this like daemon thing, which is cron and cron tabs. Cron is kind of like the correlation between daemon. So the cron is like the process that's running. And a lot of these processes are pre-written through scripts. And a script's like a basic, simple program that says, do this, do this, do this, do that. If this happens, do that. It's a, it's a basic kind of program. And with this basic program, it's pre-written, but it's also sometimes pre-scheduled. And this is where the cron tab comes into play. So the cron tab is short for cron table. So basically all these little background processes on a table that are pre-scheduled. And you can do these uh, all the way down to the second. So you can say on the year, the month, the week, the day, the second, the minute, etc. You're kind of uh, saying exactly when you want it to happen. And then you're saying how many occurrences you would like it to happen. And then you're saying what's going to happen. And what the cron does is it checks this table consistently. So this little, this little demon or daemon is checking this table saying, okay, is it time to do this process? And if it is, I'll do so. So it's checking this table, looking through all these different uh, pre-scheduled events. 
And if it's uh, 2.30 on a Thursday, then maybe it's gonna do that task of what it's supposed to do. And two examples I, I came across for uh, both securing a network and attacking a network. So a securing a network, it could be something along the lines of basically running uh, software updates or package updates for all your different systems on your network to make sure everything is up to date and all the packages are current. So you're protecting yourself against vulnerabilities. So you could do this say Monday through Friday at 2.30 a.m. And you're gonna basically have all these systems be updated while everybody else is not using the system. So you can use the processing power on the systems to do these updates and not kind of mess with people's business. The other piece is on the attacking side, but also could be a securing piece, which is basically scanning, in a, a, scanning a system, or you could scan the entire internet if you want, um, for open vulnerable ports. So you could write a, a simple kind of scanning script to look for a specific port that might be open, and you could use Nmap or something. And by scanning these, uh, doing the scan, you could have it on the cron, the cron table as well. So it could be, say, Monday through Friday, same thing, at 2.30 a.m., I want you to scan uh, this IP address range, or all of the iPad, IP addresses and see if there's any uh, open ports. And if so, then do something else based on the script that I've written. So it's just really interesting to see um, how, how automation plays such a key role in both securing and, and uh, kind of attacking things. Uh, yeah, so that, that was fascinating. But there are other things in this post if you'd like to go check it out. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. There's a lot of uh, some, some funny diagrams and funny images if, you're, if you want to have a giggle. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's it for this week. And um, hopefully I'll see you next week. So long.